Hey, you guys. So today's video is going to be my 2020 best of beauty. I have not done a best of beauty video in about three, four years. I didn't do it last year because my mother passed away last December, as you guys well know. So clearly I was not in the mood to talk about any of that stuff, but we gonna talk about it today. And if you are a regular hardcore Whitney Hedrick YouTube channel watcher, you will have seen everything in this video many, 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 many times. I, I guess I'm kind of the more boring <laughs> makeup reviewer out there because I don't know, like once I find what I like and what's working for me, I just do not really feel the need to try or buy new things. I'm not really on a lot of PR lists. I kind of just got my own thing going on here. So just bear with me if this stuff seems kind of boring. I don't think it's boring. I love all this stuff so much, but you know what I'm trying to say. You probably know it's in this video. It still will hopefully be a good time for all. We'll see how it goes. Before we get started, make sure you check the down box. Links on my social media platforms. Come hang out with me on Patreon. Hang out in the Facebook group. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new here. You know you want to. And if you're not new here, hey, what's up? How's your mom and him? And yeah, let's just get started. I am perky today. Get ready for it. I have no particular order that I'm gonna go in. So I'm just gonna pull stuff out of this little box I have in front of me and we'll just see what it do, baby boo. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the Makeup Geek Matrix system. This one is like completely empty now because I kinda moved them into a smaller Z palette that I keep in my makeup bag. If you guys want like an everyday makeup bag video, please let me know because I kind of have a whole theory on why all the makeup you own should fit into one makeup bag, but you'll have to let me know. Thumbs up the video if you want to see that and I will know. But the Makeup Geek Matrix system is something that I picked up early this year, right when it launched, I believe. And I kind of made a sweeping declaration after I bought it that I'm not buying or using any more eyeshadow palettes. And then like two months later, I was like, I don't know if I mean that anymore, guys. The funny thing about that is I made a video retracting my statement and then what ended up happening was I didn't use anything else but the Maker Geek Matrix system and a couple of quads from Charlotte Tilbury and Tom Ford. You guys know I'm not crazy adventurous with my makeup. I'm not. When I put makeup on other people, OMG, I'm going in. But on myself, I know what I like. I know what flatters me and that's what I'm finna do. So. I have gotten many questions, many questions, very recently actually, about if I still think that the Maker Geek Matrix system, that is hard to say. The Matrix system is worth it. Do I recommend it? This, that, and the third. And the short answer is yes. It's gonna depend a lot on do you need, I don't know, how many is this? Like 60, 30, 40 eyeshadows? And do you particularly need a bunch of bold colors? Like, are you wearing them? Those are the questions you really should ask yourself. But if you're someone who enjoys playing with makeup and you feel like you have a bit of an eyeshadow hoarding problem, this might be a good remedy for it. Only if you're going to use it though. Only if you're gonna use it. I've always been a big fan of Makeup Geek in general. I have not had the privilege of trying more of their products this year. I don't really know what they've come out with, but if you wanna know if this is a good choice or a good product to pick up, I'm gonna say wholeheartedly, yep, 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 yep. Next, I wanna talk to you guys about some fragrance, body care stuff, just a little bit. Side note, I am filming a body care shower routine in the next couple of days. So keep an eye out for that. The first thing I wanna talk about is this right here. This is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. This shit is expensive for what it is. This tub is about $45 and it's not huge, it's not tiny. I actually have a body cream from L'Occitane that was about as expensive, if not more, and there's like nothing in it. I'm plowing through it. And I love it so friggin' much. It is nonsense how much I love this stuff. I have several of these in my beauty trash, which I've been trying to save up for for a beauty trash video. I just bought the huge bum bum cream they bring out every winter for like a little gift for myself, because I know I'll use it, and I, I will never, probably never be without this. It's kind of famous for the smell, not so much the hydrating factor. I mean, it does hydrate the skin. It doesn't gonna, it's not gonna dry it out or anything like that. But the Shirley, absolutely, there are cheaper, absolutely there are cheaper lotions on the market, but none of them, and I'll repeat, none of them smell like this. Every time I wear this, if I walk past someone, if someone steps near me, they're like, what? is that like I get so many compliments and questions about it and in fact my best friend was here a couple of days ago she took a shower I gave her my bum bum cream and I was like put this on when you get out of the shower 
She came out of the shower. She was sitting on my couch. I was sit standing about three, four, five feet away from her talking to her and I could smell the deliciousness from there. It's powerful, but beautiful and sexy and kind of sweet, but kind of spicy. It's so good. If you guys have never smelled this, I highly recommend it. Next, a couple perfumes. The first one is Chance Chanel Eau Fresh or Chanel Chance Eau Fresh, whatever order you would put that in. I'm almost completely out of this. I'm almost completely out of a lot of things in this video. That's how you're gonna know that they are true favorites. But this is my second bottle of this this year, or excuse me, it's my second bottle in the span of one year. And clearly I need to quit messing around and get the big boy because I'm plowing through it. But not only that, Every time my daughter, my sister, my best friend, anytime any woman in my life comes near me, they will find this in my purse, on my vanity, and just go to town. So I'm running out of it for that reason, which side note, can I just tell you guys, my daughter, my sister, my best friend hasn't done it yet, but my daughter and my sister both have put this on their Christmas list. They're gonna have it, and we're all gonna smell the same. And I don't know about you guys, but like that, <laughs> It doesn't upset me. I'm not going to like quit wearing this all together, but fragrance is so like signature and I have two now official signature fragrances, this being one of them. The other one is Very Irresistible by Givenchy. If you have really been watching me for a long time, this is not the first time you've heard me talk about this perfume whatsoever, but it is the one that I have been wearing the absolute longest. I've been wearing it since I was 17 which seems crazy because who likes the same fragrances that they did when they were teenagers that they do when they grown ass women? I do, but only this one. <laughs> like I'm not still rocking with like Bath and Body Works, Sweet Pea or anything, but this is the most sexy, girly, like alluring perfume ever. If you guys have this perfume, like this perfume, anything like that, please leave me your other favorite fragrances down below because I know that whatever you like, if you love this, I will love because it's such a unique fragrance. I've never smelled another perfume quite like this. And while all of the notes in it are very floral, it doesn't smell like a straight up flower at all. It's just sexy and clean, but girly. I don't know how to explain it. it I'm not good at this at all, <laughs> but trust me, get this. Anyone, anyone who smells this on you will be absolutely in love. It's so good. So I have more skincare and hair stuff than anything. It's odd. I don't have as much makeup as I normally do. You can tell it wasn't a big heavy, heavy makeup year for me. Um, this is the Dry Bar Hot Toddy uh, Heat Protectant Mist. I get asked all the time what heat protectant I recommend. And I, I would be lying if I said I'm well versed in all different types of heat protectant. To be honest, I just started heat protecting my hair when I went blonde, which is embarrassing. But now I do it all the time and I like this one just simply because that mist is so fine. It doesn't have like any buildup, weigh the hair down. I can just all up in my shit, brush it out, good to go. So kind of a no must, no fuss, basic product that I'm really, really uh, happy with. And again, I get asked about it all the time. So yeah, the Hot Toddy from Dry Bar is the heat protectant of choice for me. So on the subject of hair, this is the Shuamora Color Luster Shades Reviving Balm in Cool Blonde. This is my second bottle of this. I talked about this in a favorites video back in June, May, June, something like that. Best toning product ever. It friggin works and it works really well. Shuamora's line as a whole, Shuamora and Kerastase are my favorite. Well, I like Bumble and Bubble too. I'm all over the place. Anyway, but definitely Shuamora and Kerastase as it pertains to like conditioners and shampoos and stuff like that. And this is no exception. It's a beautiful, beautiful, richly like neon pigmented color product. You do not need a lot of this and you do not need to use it very often to get results. And on top of everything else I just told you that makes it so swell, it smells kind of like a boy and you know I love that shit. So yeah, again, the Shuamora Color Luster Cool Blonde. They have another one that I think is for like warm blonde but I like the cool blonde, cause I am a cool blonde. Please don't unsubscribe. Next is the Kerastase Nutritive Eight Hour Magic Night Serum. I'm almost out of this. Like I told you guys, I'm gonna be almost out of a few things in here, but that just means it is a true, real favorite. And it also means I haven't, I haven't made a re-up order. Anyway, so this stuff is kinda like a night cream for your hair. Now, word to the wise, if you put a lot of product in your hair, I would stick with using this on the nights where your hair's a little more clean and without so much product because I just kinda, I mean, it works even if you put it on like a heavy product day hair, 
but I just think that it works a little better when it doesn't have to like fight to penetrate through all that buildup and product. And other than that, I have no complaints. This product is amazing, especially if you like dry shampoo, because you know how you can like put a lot of dry shampoo in your roots and inevitably it's gonna make it way down to your ends and then they get dry and not so good anymore. Using like a dry shampoo with this on your ends, it's kind of like washing your hair without having to wash your hair because you get the shampooing kind of clean benefits of the dry shampoo, but the hydration and smoothness of a conditioner, no water needed. Love this stuff. Some of this stuff I just talked about in my most recent favorite video, and I'm sorry again if this is like repetitive and boring, but it is what it is. Sometimes I, myself, am repetitive and boarding. That's okay. This is the Revlon. I don't know what this is called. It's just a hot brush. I see a lot of companies coming out with these now. If you've ever paid more than $50 for one of these hair dryers and you found that it worked incredibly well, not the Dyson, okay? Not the Dyson. Please let me know because I love this thing and if there happens to be another version of it that is superior, I want to know. But yeah, this is the Revlon hot brush. I bought this about two months ago. It's about 50 bucks. I friggin' love this thing. I love it so much that it's actually made me enjoy blow drying my hair, which I hate doing. I hate washing and blow drying my hair so friggin' much. Like I have to put it on the schedule. I gotta wash my hair today. But I like this because it's kind of meditative almost, the process of like drying the hair. I don't know what it is. I actually enjoy using it on top of the fact that it works really well. And I had some people tell me in my last video about this that they have a hard time getting it to kind of blast their roots, which I can see how that's a problem. But one thing you can do with it is if you take it and kind of just like sit it under the root like this and kind of rock it back and forth and then hit it with the cold setting. Oh, it will give you that lift that you're looking for at the root. Although you couldn't tell it for today because my hair looks like butt and I don't know why. But yeah, this thing's 50 bucks. I absolutely love it. If I had to say what my favorite beauty product all year, all year, it would be this, honestly. Love it. You can get these at Target, Amazon, they're all over the place. Amazing. Since we're talking about devices, let's keep this party rolling. This is the Foreo, Foreo UFO, which is basically a really expensive face mask. I know, I know. It's a little extra, but so's your girl. This is so neat to me. It is something that I believe would be an incredible gift either to oneself or to a friend. They will use it all the time. They will enjoy using it. I truly do enjoy using this thing. The masks that I have tried have all been pretty good. I haven't tried all of the masks that Foreo has. They have a friggin' 24 karat gold caviar mask that I saw um, the first time I saw it. it was back in like March, I think. And it has been out of stock ever since then. I can never find it in stock and I wanna try it so bad. But anyway, the ones that I like the most are Shimmer Freak. I have talked about this one in a video before because this is kind of a eye perfecter. That's what it says on the box right here. It's got caffeine and all that good stuff in it. So when you use it with your UFO around the eye area, which by the way, I don't think I've explained what this thing is. So you basically put your little sheet mask, it's like a little circle. You put her right here, you hook her up to her phone, you turn her on, and then depending on what mask you pair it with, it can have different types of LED light that come with it, or it could have different types of pulsating benefits, cooling, heating up. It really depends on the mask. But for example, with the Shimmer Freak, because it's like caffeine infused and supposed to reduce puffiness and brighten the eyes, it's cooling, very, very cooling. Your eyes just look awake, just bright. You could have like been on a three day bender and for you gonna keep all your secrets, girl. So good. The other one that I really like is the H2 Overdose. It's just a hyaluronic acid, good moisturizing, basic mask. Use this one a lot as well. But if I had to say which one I love the most, simply because I bought this one the most so far, is is the shimmer free certainly don't buy this whole thing just for one mask around one area of your face but if you do have this thing and you haven't tried shimmer freak yet do it do it and we'll talk about a little bit about makeup there is not much in here it's a little crazy i didn't try a whole lot of new makeup this year i did buy a bunch of beauty products when um lockdown happened back in march about a lot but it was all skincare <laughs> pretty much all skincare and a little bit of hair care i'm just not feeling it with makeup, especially because now, even if I wanted to try anything new, every time I go into Sephora and Ulta, all the testers are locked up, which is a deal breaker for me. It's a big part of why I don't buy that much drugstore makeup. Like I can't touch it. I need to, I need to get my little grubby fingers all over it. Um, so it's been a little bit difficult with me in makeup. There's not a lot. There's not a lot. I'm not going to lie. It's stuff. Like I said, if you've been watching me for a while, you already know what I'm going to say. 
These are the Ilor London Lux Set. Almost said Lux Sex. Goodness. Ilor London Lux Silk Marquee eyelashes. I'm actually wearing these today. I love these eyelashes. Every time I order them, because I usually have to order them, because when I go to Ulta to pick them up, they're always sold out. Uh, I buy like five packs of them because, first of all, I've mentioned this several times when I talk about lashes. I don't know if you can tell, but the ends of them curl up on their own. And I have hooded eyes. So if a lash really doesn't do that, I mean, I can fiddle with it and make it do it and kind of curl upwards against my eyelid if I want to, but sometimes I just don't want to. Actually, usually I don't want to. If you have hooded eyes, you know what I mean. Like your hoods will kind of push lashes downwards. So when something can kind of curl up on its own, I'm in it, baby. And these are those lashes. These are, these are those. Okay. Good job, Whitney. Wow. Way to speak. The other thing I like about them is because of the nature of the lash and how high quality it is to include the band, they reuse really well. Like this pack of lashes, this three pack of lashes, which I think is like $15, which is a pretty good deal. If you ask me, if you take care of your lashes and you get yourself one of these guys, like a little lash holder to keep your used lashes in, which I recommend anyway, uh, these will, this little three pack could last you like I'd be willing to say like two months because I bought a order of these a while ago, a while ago, and I'm still not out of them. And I'd be wearing lashes all the time, you know I do. So yeah, I love these guys. And they're drugstore, I guess you would consider. Love them, love them, love them. I almost don't even wanna talk about the makeup favorites in here because I just talked about all of this stuff in my last favorites video, which went up like 20 minutes ago. So I'm sorry, this is boring again. This is the Fenty Cream Bronzers in Macchiato and Amber. It's not so much the color that draws me to these, although that doesn't hurt matters. It's more the formula and more or less the fact that I've tried several cream contour products and this is just consistently so much easier to use and so much more affordable than my old favorite cream contour, which was the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. I think I used this all year last year. The only problem with this one is because of the color, if you mix it with the wrong foundation, um, it'll turn green on you, which is never fun. And then uh, on top of that, it is expensive as hell. Like this duo, which I only use one side of, costs like $100, something like that. These are around 30 or 40. Love them. Uh, definitely check out my recent contour, highlight, complexion routine I posted the other day. I'll link it up below. Up below. Up above and down below. So uh, yeah, watch it if you wanna see these bad boys in action. I'll do lips really quick and then we'll do skincare. These are my favorite lip products of the year. You guys, for someone who loves red lipstick as much as I do, really didn't, really didn't wear it much this year. So everything I have is a nude. I'm not normally the biggest nude fan, but I had some good ones this year. For lipsticks, I only have three. Um, the one that I have been wearing literally since this time last year and wore consistently all year, you guys already know what I'm gonna say. This is the Mel Thompson and Christian Audette collab, the color Beauty. I have been using this nonstop and look how, like I have barely made a dent in it. Go through my Instagram pictures if you want. See how many times I tag this lipstick in it. Like I've worn it a ton. And I think the good news is if I'm not mistaken, this collab is still available. I think they did a restock not too long ago. Most of the time when I mention this, it's not available. Check and see if it is. I don't know if it is, but if it is, pick it up. It's beautiful. And then the other two I have are from Buxom. I literally just talked about these as well. These are the 90s nude lipsticks in Heather and Heartthrob. Where did I get Heather from? And Heartthrob and Fly Girl. I think what I like about these outside of the color choices, I did really enjoy the ones that they went with is the formula is so nice. It is that perfect middle between like a, like a cream sheen from Mac. You know what I'm talking about? That kind of like gooey lip prop, like YSL. YSL lipsticks are beautiful, but they like almost feel like you're rubbing like butter on your mouth. They're so creamy. And, and then also like kind of that sweet spot between that and a full blown matte where it's just kind of like chalky and dry. This goes on the lips well. It's not, you know how you can wear a lipstick that's so shiny that it makes your lips look almost invisible. There's no like structure. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Um, that's not the case with these, Boris. Side note, 
me and my kid have this really weird inside joke that I couldn't tell you if my life depended on it where it came from but we call each other Boris and I always slip into this accent for some reason now even when I'm not speaking to her I don't know what it is okay these are great as I just said and I'm not the biggest fan of nude lips I mean I am but I don't think you need a million of them. I truly don't. Should you happen to be on the market for any new lipstick though, might I recommend these? Cause they're great. Lip liner. I got this back in August. So it hasn't been in rotation as long as some other lip liners I love. Unlike Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude, which I wore for years. I love that lip liner. Once I got this though, it's kind of been all I'm using. I talked about it in my recent favorite video again. I'm wearing it right now. I don't like my lip liner job that I did today, but that's okay. Uh, this is a straight up brown. Like it, it does not seem at first glance that this dark of a lip liner would work on me, but if you kind of apply it and then feather it out with your finger or with a brush, it just takes on this beautiful natural undertone which is what I like in a nude lip liner where it just kind of looks like the edge of my lip as opposed to a lip liner that needs to precisely match the nude lip I'm wearing. Does that make sense? I want this to bring structure to my lips and also it helps a nude lipstick not get too nude or like wash you out nude if you have the right tone of lip liner. Now I do have videos, really in-depth makeup videos coming because you guys love them. And one of them is how to pick a perfect nude and a perfect red. So if you're interested in that, make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it when it goes up. I have two glosses, actually three. I think the third one is in my purse somewhere and I don't feel like getting it. Uh, the first one is Dolly from Buxom. And while we're at it, I already talked about this in my last video too. Are you guys like pissed about how anticlimactic this favorites video is? Uh, Buxom Dolly, everything I recommend. It's beautiful, beautiful color, but that lip gloss is stunning as well as Claire. This was my favorite last year and I actually rebought this. Again, when I look at this in the tube, it's so pink and like not something I would normally be drawn to. You know how some girls nude lip vibe is like a baby pink vibe? I am not that girl. Mine is more like a little bit of pink, not so much brown, more neutral than anything, yada, yada, yada. However, what I believe I love so much about this gloss as well as Dolly is I can put it on top of a nude lip and no matter what nude lip I put it on top of, it makes the lip, the lip color look better for my skin tone because it has like this little bit of a purple undertone and I don't know why but that looks great on my lips. I would have never thought so had I not just been playing around with makeup one day and figured it out. But it's true, for some reason, a little bit, little bit of purple, like 2% purple. Works well on me with a lip gloss. I don't know what it is, it's wild. And lastly, in terms of lip gloss, this came in a gift set that Buxom recently sent me. This is Celeste, and I, I look at this one every time I go to Ulta, I go to the Buxom section and look at their lip glosses because I just love Buxom lip glosses. I love all of Buxom, uh, all their products, do I wanna say that? Everything I've tried, yeah, everything I've tried I like, uh, but chief of which, their lip products. Anyway, so I look at this one every time I'm at Ulta. I just like, I pick it up, it goes in my basket, I walk around the store, and then for some reason it always ends up getting put back. For some reason I never walk out with it, but I always, I always leave wondering what could have been. And then Buxom sent me this, so I don't have to wonder anymore. This, ooh, I love that noise, you guys. That is one of my favorite sounds in the world. I don't know what it is. Oh, that one was not nearly as satisfying, but whatever. So this gloss is not one of those purple tones like I told you about. This one's almost, I mean, not almost, it is clear, but it has a little bit of glitter in it. This like really sparkly glitter and glitter gloss can be difficult. The only people I think do it perfectly are Mac with their dazzle glasses, but this is pretty good too. You can feel a little bit of the grit, just a little, but not enough to bother me. Like Anastasia Beverly Hills did a glitter gloss two, three years ago and it was disgusting. I was offended, but this is really good. And it's a beautiful color and it's called Celeste. And that's all I have to say about that. Next, I'll tell you guys about a super big random favorite. And if you can help me figure out how to make a video around this, I will do it tomorrow. <laughs> so quick story. I went to Georgia, which is where I'm from, if you're new, for Thanksgiving and we were getting ready. We had to do some shopping. As always, you guys, masks on small gatherings, like being responsible, I promise. But we had to do a little bit of shopping the day before uh, because I realized that I got all the way to Georgia without my friggin' brushes. And I don't take all my brushes with me when I travel or anything, but these are my brushes. I have curated this thing 
everything in here is useful to me. I love it. I love brushes. So when I realized I didn't bring my makeup brushes, I was like, oh my God, like what am I gonna do? So I went to Ulta and I was actually gonna buy the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe because I have this kit, as you can tell, and I like it. It's the only Morphe brushes I actually do like. And I was just gonna buy the big bodacious kit, like the full one that you can buy off Morphe, whatever. I was positive I was gonna be able to find that at Ulta because uh, I thought it was Morphe brushes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought that was the whole thing, but weirdly enough, when I got to Ulta, it was nothing but eyeshadow palettes and like a couple of brushes. There was not much I could do. So I ended up walking over to the Real Technique section and picking up three kits. They ended up totaling $60. These are dirty because I just used them. And I did a full face with these as well, if not better in some areas, as I do it when I have this bohonkin thing with me. And it really opened my eyes to kind of what how like a price point on a brush can really blind us to, I don't know, the necessity of it. Because for example, while I do have some Morphe brushes that I enjoy, I also have a lot of Wayne Goss brushes, which are not cheap, but they are just divine. They're so soft and beautiful. It's not even funny, but some of these, they're not Wayne Goss soft, but they're really nice. Like they work so well. So I think I ended up getting, I will leave it. I will leave the actual kits I got down below. But these brushes are so good. And I kept telling my friends, I was like, I need to come up with like a video where it's like kind of comparing, like I'm sure these brushes are worth like a thousand dollars versus $60. Like what you can get done is insane with such a small amount of brushes if they are well done. And these are incredibly well done. And some of them are super unique and superior to the more expensive versions I have. Like this is the uh, Real Techniques 400 brush. I used this for bronzer and I used it to buff out my makeup the same way I always do with the um, It Cosmetics wand ball brush. Like look how similar they are. This one's a little bit smaller, works just as good, if not better. Probably better for bronzer than anything else. It's a gorgeous brush. Um, this is a great brush for concealer. Like I didn't use a beauty blender. I just put concealer on with this all the time now and I love it. This is the Real Techniques 206 brush. Um, they're liner brushes. OMG, don't get me started, okay? They're dirty, again, because I just used them. Can't stress that enough. This is their Real Techniques. I don't know, that's tiny, I can't read it. This is their angle brush. You can use this for liner, but I use it for my dip brow, and it's so good. It applies everything so precisely, but this liner brush, you guys, this liner brush, I don't know what the number is. Again, it's tiny, and I'm old. Works better than almost any other brush I've ever used and it was really inexpensive. So good. Um, the eye, I use this as an eyeshadow brush, if you can imagine it. It does not look anything like what I would normally gravitate to for an eyeshadow brush, but I use it for crease color. Worked in, I'm just gonna sit here and make a love song about these brushes. I don't know. Long story short, if you guys don't mess around with Real Techniques brushes very much, you just walk right past them at Target and at Ulta, you're, you're messing up because they're really, really good. Everything else use skincare and two of them I have talked about very recently almost ad nauseum so I'll just get through them really quick and link you to some more content surrounding these products the Meta Heal and MF line I am out of the serum I can't get any more out which really bums me out and I'm out of the moisturizer equally as bummed love these things you guys they're so good I get asked all the time what my favorite affordable skincare is and it's this and CeraVe. I use the CeraVe, CeraVe uh, foaming facial wash and the moisturizer every day for almost this, almost this whole year. Yeah, I bought it back in March. And this, effective, reasonably priced, beautiful products, run, don't walk. I'll leave a full-blown video all about this NMF line down below. This seems vulgar to point like this. Oh, uh, I turn the camera on and I become like a 13 year old immature child. It's disgusting. Why do you watch me? Ugh. So this is the advanced snail 96 mucin power essence from COSRX. Like I told you, everything is either, a lot of things are gonna be either out or almost out. And I bought this with like four other essences slash toners in March. Like it was a lot of them. This is the only one I'm out of. Uh, this is hard to explain. So this stuff is really interesting in consistency, kind of like an egg white. And 
it it has this satisfying, hydrating, soothing. I don't even know. I couldn't tell you definitively, like I use this and my pores are smaller. I use this and my skin tone is more even. It's more just like it soothes my skin so much and like stops, I feel like it's repairing my skin barrier maybe a little. I don't even know what it does. I don't even know what it does. I use tretinoin, retinol, exfoliate. I'm aggressive with the exfoliation and sometimes I can take it a little too far and this is a product that consistently when I use it, I feel like my skin kind of heals itself a little bit quicker and or at the very least feels immediately calmed and smoothed when I have taken it too far, which I do all the time. As you can probably imagine, I take everything too far. Recommend it. Affordable. I think this was like $15. You can get these at Ulta, Soko Glam, maybe Amazon, uh, and maybe Target. I have seen people post pictures of this at Target before. Casa Rex is a great K-beauty brand. They actually have several things in this snail mucin line that I would love to try. Snail mucin is such an interesting, odd, and disgusting sounding ingredient. That works really well. So yeah, Casa Rex. I just talked about these as well, so I'm not gonna get super into it, but these are the Obagi Complexion Renewal Pads. I don't know why I have to smell everything. Uh, I'm almost out of these again. Like they're all the way down here. I have about four of these in my beauty trash. I'm trying, like I said, trying to stock it all up, get ready for a, a beauty trash video, but consistently buy these. They work amazing. If you have breakouts, if you struggle with it, I really recommend these. I mean, it depends on to the degree of your breakouts, but I use tretinoin and retinols and this in combination. And it really does help with my breakouts. I am someone who breaks out very easily from almost everything. So I need the help. And this has been here in the clutch for me all year. I'll probably never be without this. It's, it's a simple, basic, effective, beautiful product. Last, <laughs> last, last, last. This skincare wise, I've had a lot of great, great products come into my life this year. But one of the ones that really changed the game for me simply because it allowed me to use an ingredient that previously I did not have good luck with is Truth Treatments and that is particularly their vitamin C products. And let me go ahead and get this out of the way. The Truth Treatment skincare line is not cheap. It is not reasonably priced at all. I will say though, the benefits of this are unlike anything I have seen from another skin, except for like tretinoin. There's never been another product I have introduced to my skincare routine that I can see the way my skin has changed. Now, particularly, again, as it pertains to the vitamin C, this is the Transdermal C Serum. Serum, I hate saying that word. And the Transdermal C Balm. These are all the travel or sampler size, which by the way, I have had all of these since March and because you need such a tiny amount of them, they're all almost completely full. Like these are the retinols, the two green ones. And then this blue one is the sea balm and that's the one I'm the most out of. I ordered them in the smaller sizes initially because I wanna make sure they don't break me out. They're so expensive and they don't, they're beautiful. I love them. Uh, all of them I love equally, but again, the, tr the transdermal C, the vitamin C, historically anything, anything, vitamin C breaks me out. Out. So I always hear people talking about how good it is for your skin and this, that, and the third, and it's antioxidant power and blah, blah, blah. But I could never use it, so I never saw the benefits of it. But this stuff, this stuff right here, can't even tell you. It has made my skin so bright. Now, I will always suffer a little bit with hyperpigmentation marks that come from uh, breakouts that I will always have for the rest of my life. Feels like it's never gonna end, you guys. I'm 35. When will I stop breaking out? Anyway. The benefit of it, <laughs> all that said, is it evens your skin tone out. It makes it so bright and clear. I've never seen and I, I honestly thought I could never have. Like even if I didn't have a break on my face, I felt like my skin just always looks a little blotchy, just, just not even. This has given me even skin. Like I love it. And again, with the retinols, I use tretinoin, so I'm not relying on these very much, but I do use them. I'll use them in between. Or if I'm traveling, I'll take these instead of my tretinoin and they still get the job done. It's still increasing that cell turnover, helping fighting, you know, 
wrinkles and things of that nature. It's great. And then this is the Biomedic Mineral Mist. You do not need this at all, honestly. But the founder of this company says that this particular mist is superior because it has like minerals in it, like dirt. And as a result, like it's supposed to help with the actual, like, I don't know if it's true. I have tons of these kind of facial mists or whatever. They all claim to do amazing things. I couldn't tell you definitively if I found that to be true about this one by itself at the very least, but in conjunction, so good. And, and I forgot to mention why you might wanna pick this up anyway. You're probably gonna to wanna to pick up some kind of facial mist if you don't already have one because these products are so thick and goopy. Like this vitamin C, which I'm probably almost out of, come on. Oh my gosh. This vitamin C is like oil and it's not easy to spread it across the surface of the skin, especially with like the balms because you need such a tiny amount. If you get a little bit, spray your face with this or any mist, it'll kind of help spread it more evenly across the surface of the skin, which is what you're looking for because you don't need a lot and you really don't want to use a lot of this. So truth treatment, baller baller shot collar love it so much all right guys i gotta get out of here my hair is offending me today it's being annoying um as always thank you to the patrons we recently announced the new book club winner which is atomic habits by james clear we will be having our book club meeting on patreon on friday december 11th if memory serves so if this video is up by then and you want to come hang out definitely make sure you do so by then there will be a lot more content and kind of organization on the book club in january and from that point moving forward it's just that october november and december i'm kind of beta testing this figuring out the kinks and what i need to work on so Definitely hang out with us now if you would like to, but you're really going to see a better inception of this book club come January. I'm thinking about calling it wit Witterature, Witterature, something like that I can do. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I got to get out of here. I hope you guys are having a great day. Check the down bar links on my social media platforms. Come hang on Patreon. Come hang in the Facebook group and I will catch you in the next one.